Hi everyone. Today we're going to be doing an experiment with a glow stick. And you probably already know this, but to activate a glow stick in order for it to glow, it is a chemical reaction that's occurring. So the question that we're gonna be answering today is, does temperature affect the rate of that chemical reaction in a glow stick? So essentially what we're gonna be doing is taking the glow stick, after we activate it, we're gonna put it in cold water, hot water, and observe it at room temperature and see does it glow more brightly, less brightly, depending on, on the temperature of it. So the first thing you're gonna do is write your hypothesis. So if you go to your Google slide, and it's kind of hard to see when I hold it up this way, you'll see that there's a spot on the very first slide that, has, that says edit text. That's where you're going to write your hypothesis. What do you think we're gonna see when we look at a glow stick in cold water, hot water, room temperature? Do you think that there's gonna be a difference? Do you think temperature will affect that? So what you're gonna do now is Pause the video, write down your hypothesis, and then come back to join me in just a minute. Okay, you wrote down your hypothesis. Now we're gonna be taking a closer look at your unbroken glow stick. If you look closely at it, you'll see that there, there are several things that are inside this tube moving around. So I'm gonna hold this up so that you can see it. Mine might look a little different than yours. You might see that there's an air bubble going back and forth, but there's also a tiny little capsule in there. Um, I'm gonna be showing you another picture too so you can see it up close. So what's in there? There's a fluorescent dye. So that this tube made out of plastic, it's filled with this chemical dye, a fluorescent dye. And in there, there's a little glass container called an ampule. In the ampule, there's hydrogen peroxide. That's a liquid that we often use to clean cuts. So right now, they are being kept separate from each other. And it's not until you bend, so you've probably done this, I'm sure, a million times with your glow sticks. You know that you bend it, and then it'll start to glow. What you're actually doing then is breaking the ampule that's inside. And once the liquid that's inside the ampule mixes with the other liquid, that's what's going to start a chemical reaction and cause your glow stick to glow. Before we activate it, on your second slide, look at your unbroken glow stick. Notice the container that's inside it, draw a diagram of it, label the parts, and then decide or describe how the glow stick works. So you're going to insert your drawing here. Um, if you're able to, I know you have different ways of doing this when we're doing virtual learning. Maybe you wanna put this and explain everything and draw right on it there. Maybe you wanna do your drawing on a piece of paper, take a picture of it and insert it there. You can always take the picture and attach it separately but just make sure you diagram the parts of your glow stick before you activate it. And if yours was accidentally already activated, again, I'm gonna show you mine and you can do that for your diagram. All right, so draw your diagram, pause the video, and then come back. Okay, now to test your glow sticks, you are going to activate it and then you're going to be putting one well take your glow stick and put it in ice water for about two to three minutes take it out observe and notice how how does it look and what would you rank the brightness as would you say it's very bright would you say it's just glowing a little bit so two or three minutes in some ice water two or three minutes just sitting at room temperature and then you're also going to do two or three minutes in hot water you wanna make sure with your hot water, you don't have it too hot. If it's too hot, it could cause your glow stick to leak. So I would say, because you're at home, you might not have a thermometer to see exactly the right temperature of the water. I would heat it to be about the temperature that you would heat hot chocolate to when you, you know, it's hot, but you can still drink it without burning your mouth. That would be a good temperature for your glow stick. So I'm going to actually do this with three glow sticks because I happen to have three and I will, have you pause now so that you can do the experiment right down your own observations, but then come back and you'll see how mine end up doing. So go ahead and activate it. Again, you wanna observe it room temperature, cold water, hot water, about two or three minutes in each one. All right, this might seem strange, but I brought the glow sticks into the bathroom where it's really dark so you'd be able to see better. So this one is the one that's at room temperature. I let them sit for three minutes. So there is room temperature. This is the one that's in the ice water. And this is the one that's in the hot water. 
So room temperature, you can see the one that was in ice water is not bright at all anymore. And the one that is in the hot water is glowing much more brightly. Okay, time for the last slide, which is the conclusion. So we're gonna talk about what was happening, how did the temperature affect the rate of the chemical reaction, and what were the energy transformations that you saw happening. So listen to this last part, and I'm gonna have you put, just put this in your own words for that last slide. So when you broke the ampule, the chemicals mixed together and formed new chemicals. So those chemicals did not need as much energy to hold their molecules together, and they're releasing that extra energy as light or radiant energy. When you put it in cold water, the glow stick wasn't as bright. That's because the water, cold water is absorbing some of the thermal energy from the glow stick, so the reaction slowed down. So a lot of times kids will say they expect to see the glow stick to be more bright when it's in cold water. And why do they say that? Because they know that if they take a glow stick and put it in the freezer, it makes it last longer. And this is why, that's, it's slowing it down. But as far as glowing brightly, it's not, it's not as bright. The hot water, now the glow stick is absorbing thermal energy from the hot water and that added energy is making these chemicals react faster and produce more light. So at room temperature, a glow stick is gonna glow for about two hours. Um, in hot water, it's gonna glow for about 30 minutes. In ice water, it'll glow for six hours. So it, this is why you put it in the freezer when you're trying to get it to last longer. Um, so it's glowing more brightly, but it's not gonna glow as long when you speed it up like that. So you add thermal energy, the glow stick will glow brighter, but for a shorter amount of time. You take away the thermal energy and it's gonna glow for a long time, but just not as brightly. But either way, it's the same amount of light that's being produced. So this is a good example of changing chemical energy into radiant energy and the temperature of the glow sticks will affect the rate of the chemical reaction and the intensity of the light. I know this isn't quite as easy to see when you only have one glow stick, so it might be one of those things you maybe are able to pick up later on where you can have a few and do them side by side like this. All right, bye, see you guys later.